Hey, Pastor Scott here with a word of encouragement. If you were with us this past Sunday in worship, either in person or online, you know that we looked at the book of Habakkuk on the first Sunday of Advent. And Habakkuk is just, just, is just overwhelmed with frustration and anger at what's going on in the southern kingdom of Judah to which he is called uh, to prophesy. He's overwhelmed with the human corruption and the depravity. And so he calls out to God that, God, would you do something about this? And God says, I'm going to do something that is going to be utterly amazing. And you think, yes, God is going to take care of business. He is going to straighten all these people out and it's going to be great. But God had a different idea of what is utterly amazing. Here's what's utterly amazing. God is going to use the Babylonians as his instrument of divine judgment and justice against his own people. Again, let's remember, God's ways and God's thoughts are not our ways and our thoughts. And this is what God says in Habakkuk chapter 1, the sixth verse. I'm raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. God is going to use this ruthless empire as an instrument of his own hand when they are actually the ones who deserve divine judgment more than anyone else. But we are also told that God will deal with the sins of Babylon. So here's the question as a, as a follow-up. So what did happen to Babylon? Did God, in fact, deal with them? What was promised? And what happened? And is there evidence today? A buddy of mine this week who had no idea that I was preaching about Babylon sent several of us a, a YouTube video of a biblical archaeologist who had the same questions. And he explored the site of Babylon today with the question, did the prophecies against Babylon actually come true? It is fascinating and I want to encourage you to watch it yourself. It's uh, in a link just down below. And I want you to be encouraged because this is the truth. And biblical archaeology has continually and consistently borne this out. That's what's written here is borne out at, to be true from archaeological finds. This book and what's written in it can be trusted. And the one who wrote it and made sure it got into our hands as it is written here is trustworthy. And with that in mind, I hope you'll be encouraged.